So we've all seen some of the amazing things that OpenAI and ChatGPT specifically are able to create this year, you know, from, from text or stories or writing book reports or whatever, as well as creating images from scratch with just a text prompt, which is just absolutely amazing. But this really opens up an entire new field called generative AI. And there are a variety of different use cases for that. I'm Joe James, and today I want to talk a little bit about generative AI. Now, first, there are a, a number of different companies making generative AI APIs for software developers and app builders. Uh, of course, you're familiar with OpenAI slash ChatGPT, which is amazing in itself. But some of the other leaders are Google Bard, which is still kind of in its infancy, but is developing into a very impressive AI engine for, for content generation or generative AI company called Cohere, Stability AI, and Jasper are all uh, very strong competitors in the generative AI space. And there are a few other smaller ones that are still developing. And there are a number of other ones that are really just based on the ChatGPT engine. So I tried to avoid listing those in this uh, particular slide. But these are companies that are developing APIs for generative AI that you can integrate into your application. So what types of use cases would you use generative AI for? Well, there are a lot. Obviously, the first one is writing things from a text prompt. So you could write, for example, a, a story or any kind of creative stuff. These generative AIs do pretty impressive work at creating imagination-based content. So they can also write product descriptions. If you give it enough detail on the product using a simple prompt, it can write a, a nice, flowery, smooth, elegant product description for you. Another important application for generative AI is to summarize text documents. So it can take a long text document, even as long as a book, and write a brief summary of it. If you want a few paragraph summary of a book or a few pages summary, or you want to write a book report, generative AI is able to do that. It's able to summarize text documents. And there are a lot of business applications for that as well. There are companies that, like law firms, for example, that just have lots and lots of documents that they don't have time to read through every document, classify it, file it, organize stuff. Using AI, they can scan documents and get text summaries of each document. You can also use generative AI for coding. People have actually written some basic Python programs uh, you can, you can write code in almost any language using generative AI. Now, I don't know how good that is, but we're probably going to look at that more in the future. You can synthesize music. There have been entire songs and albums written just using generative AI. I think that will continue to improve the quality of music that you can create. You could also um, just create the, the lyrics to a song. If you want to write a poem or lyrics to a song using generative AI, you could do that. You give it some kind of prompt of what you just want the song to be about, and you could write your own Taylor Swift song, let's say, about you know breaking up with people. So this is also useful for dubbing videos or um, for creating deep fakes, which a lot of people hate, some people love. And you can create logos, you can create um, visual artwork, uh, pretty impressive visual artwork using generative AI. So these are some of the generative AI use cases, and I think Generative AI is going to find its way into a lot of applications in the near future. People are trying to integrate these generative AI engines into their application to create new content. Now, in future videos, I want to actually use these APIs and write sample applications using them so you can see what kinds of things can be done. I hope this video is helpful for you. If so, please click the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.